is new uh, to Arizona, and we're glad to be able to bring that, and especially to bring it to uh, Green Valley. Um, it's uh, our home now, and we are uh, more than excited to be here. We've been here a, a little over a year, so uh, we're we're glad uh, we're glad we're here, and we're glad uh, we're part of this community. Um, we want to give you first some history and some overview of what on earth the Stress Busters is. It's been a, around a while, and um, we uh, want to give you kind of where it came from. It has a pretty solid research-based background. Uh, but I do want to start with uh, just a little question here. How many, how many of, of you know someone who is a family caregiver? or uh, for a family member who has dementia or chronic illness. Yes, sir. Um, it kind of goes along with the territory here, uh, where we are, and something that, uh, you know, is just part of, part of who we are and part of where we are. And we'll let you know a little bit about how we got involved with that uh, to start out with. Um, again, our, our folks, some is specifically on family caregivers. There's two programs that we're going to talk about just a little, but the one that we're going to talk mostly about is the one that's for uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, there's a thing called ADRD. You may have heard that in some of your presentations. It's, it's uh, Al Alzheimer's disease and related dimensions, saying that yes, they're all part, they're kind of cousins on the spectrum there. Um, Caregivers, as you know a good bit about already, are uh, mainly middle-aged or uh, older adult <coughs> children or spouses or family of some sort uh, that sacrifice their own health care to care for um, the loved one who's battling this uh, disease. Uh, it's an experience for which most people are not prepared. It's not something that we uh, see coming. It kind of comes on us and it kind of kind of comes sometimes gradually, sometimes more uh, pronounced, but it's not something that we uh, that we know a lot about until we until we run into it. Uh, caregivers also are kind of uh, victims of the disease, if you will. Uh, you, you know that if you're part of, of any of that as a family caregiver, it's it's not only the, the loved one, but it's uh, you are the caregiver themselves. Uh, there's psychological, social, economic impacts of caregiving, and we can talk a little bit more as we go through that. Uh, and it all can be uh, over, uh, pretty well overwhelming. Uh, for anybody that's uh, involved with this. So uh, Pam's going to give you a little background on kind of how we got started with this and where it came from. Pam? Yes. We wanted to talk, first of all, before I do that, um, just to tell, just to show you something that we found. There are only four kinds of people in the world. Those who have been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, those who will be caregivers and those who will need a caregiver. Okay, so what's our connection with Stress Busters? Well, it started in 2014, and we moved my mother. Well, first of all, we had moved her from uh, Tennessee, where I had grown up, to San Antonio, Texas, where we were living. And she had dementia, and she could no longer live by herself. So we moved her. She was able to do assisted living for about a year. And then uh, she was one of those wonders and uh, then developed uh, uh, <coughs> psychosis and paranoia and hallucinations. And, uh, and so anyway, once she became a wanderer, we had to move her into a mental care facility uh, just because they need to have 24-hour care. They need someone, they need eyes on there was a man 24 in the hours a day. Okay. Not someone I recognize. And so, anyway, we moved her into a room of care. Uh, we looked at lots of them. 
Uh, I can tell you what to look for, what not to look for, what to ask. Uh, and it's, uh, what I found was one of the most painful things to have to do. It was the best thing in the world for my mother because then she was around other people who had the same disease she was. So when we went back to see her four days later, they wouldn't let us come back until about four days later, which is good. That's what you want because you want them to depend on those caregivers, not you. She was the one walking around the halls with a group of ladies behind her singing. I mean, she was happier than I had seen her in years. So, even though it's a hard thing, it's a really good thing. So, at that time, um, I attended a stress busters group. I'm not sure how I found out about it. Uh, I'm really glad because I was probably at the barrel, bottom of the barrel. I had never been uh, that low. And Gary and I both have a master's in counseling, but when you're going through something like this, your master's in counseling really uh, is of no use to you uh, because it, I found, you know, it was useless to me. And I was going to therapy as well. But anyway, I found a stress busters group, found out what it was, uh, interviewed for it because we do, we, anybody who's interested, we go, do go through to make sure they're a good fit. Luckily I was, and um, most people are. Uh, but what it did is it changed my personal life positively, my home life, which Gary was very happy about. <laughs> And, and my relationship with my new mom, which made it a lot easier to start working with uh, her in her with Alzheimer's. I didn't actually go through the program, but I felt the effects of that when Pam went through that. And um, both of my parents uh, at some point in time had uh, forms of dementia, vascular and cognitive. My dad uh, was involved with dementia for a number of years, and, and uh, thank goodness my mother uh, didn't have it quite as long. Hers came along from, uh, let me go ahead and put these both up here. Uh, my mom came about it, as, as you may know, uh, it comes about with anesthesia, and at some point in time, if if um, if they get too much of it, or they have to have so much to, like a like a broken hip or whatever, um, it uh, doesn't go away. The anesthesia doesn't go away, and so she she was affected for the rest of her life, and it uh, was I guess fortunate that it didn't last any, any longer than it did. Uh, we were long distance caregivers with my dad. We were about three and a half hours away, uh, which kind of was a struggle because my mother at the time was attempting to take care of him. And uh, that uh, was a struggle for her and it was a struggle for us as to go down and be sure things were okay every week or every other week. Uh, you know how that, that kind of thing uh, can go. We did move uh, my mother to San Antonio after he uh, died and uh, she was doing great until that hip thing came along. And so uh, we, we both have had a brush with this and um, it's um, certainly uh, certainly something that puts your, uh, puts your antennas up and I'm glad that Pam found something and I'm glad that, that uh, um, I got the, the benefit of that and I realized something that uh, we would like to share with, uh, with others uh, because, of its, uh, because, of, because of, of what it does. It's very positive. It really would have been nice for stress busters to be around when we were going through this with his parents. Just for that support and stress. And, you know, his dad had vascular dementia and his mother had cognitive dementia. And, you know, really, it doesn't matter what kind of dementia you have. Dementia is dementia. The results are the same. So, uh, the concepts of interrelated concept with care game, we just kind of wanted to show you this. Uh, we know that you've been over this probably a lot, but um, the caregivers are impacted by each one of these concepts, by stress, both in their personal life, 
their home life, their work life, you name it. Uh, their coping skills, and then their coping skills and their stress intertwined, as well as their family dynamics, dynamics. so family dynamics, the culture, depending on what culture it is, that, inter that also interplays with this. But all of them hit the caregiver, and then all of them work together as well. Um, we won't go into the, all of the nice numbers and everything that go with this, but the, when this started, there was a need to uh, make sure that this was on solid ground. So there's a lot of research and a lot of data that we can share with you if you'd like to see it. But uh, the point is that this this uh, this program has uh, been uh, researched and put together and evaluated both during and and before and after the program. So there's some there's some background to it, and uh, we want you to. to to know that that's there. Um, you can see this map is already outdated. We were on, uh, when we became certified, we were with a number of states. Uh, it's a Zoom, Zoom thing uh, over a couple of weeks that we uh, did our training with, uh, with it. Uh, but Illinois and, uh, and Michigan it, Illinois is, uh, is noted here, Michigan is not, nor is Arizona, so there's at least two more, and those people were with us on the training, so it's coming. Uh, it's coming in a lot of other, other places. I just wanted you to know that there are, there are spots in the road that it's, uh, it's already there, and uh, it is a, it's a growing, uh, growing program. Well, and this is the first time it will be offered, you know, first time it is in Arizona. What we were trained on is to be master trainers, which means we can have, um, we can be facilitators for the dementia and the chronic illness, and they're two separate groups uh, for the caregivers. We can then train facilitators that we can mentor and support that can also have these groups. Um, I want to give you, oh, and then the reason we decided to go back to Stress Busters is we are members of St. Francis, and we started seeing a lot, some of our members, they were caregivers for uh, family members who had dementia. And so I was talking to Gary about starting a support group because I was, I did a support group at one of the memory cares my mother lived. And again, my counseling background was great, but what helped me do that was Stress Buster because he got me to the point to accept all of this and to work with it and uh, to deal with it and not deny what was going on. So anyway, but we are, but the reason we decided, that's why we decided to bring stress busters here is because that's the reason I was able to do a support group. So how it all started was in 1996. And the way it started, there was a relax, relaxation therapy for Alzheimer's family caregivers. They worked uh, with the caregivers on a one-on-one -on -one -on basis. They taught simple breathing and relaxation, some imagery, okay? okay. And then, uh, so in this, they did the uh, breathing and they also did the imagery as far as uh, stress relieving techniques to the individual care caregivers. Well, the in individual caregivers wanted more. They wanted more education on stress management. They wanted to be in a small group. They didn't want to be by themselves. So that's when phase two came along. So phase two started in 2001. It is a stress busting program for dementia for the family caregivers. It is a small group setting, usually six to eight people, uh, nine weeks, one and a half hours each week, and then each participant will receive a personal workbook. And so this is the Stress Busters workbook that the particip participants will get. 
And uh, United Methodist here has agreed to buy us our first set, which is fabulous. We're real excited about that. And in fact, we're going to have our first group here at United Methodist. And then the Chronic Illness, uh, St. Francis has agreed to buy that for us. And we're also going to, we thought during the summer, why not? It's hot in the afternoon. We'll just have a second group. And so we'll run two groups this summer a dementia one and a chronic illness one. And then on this uh, dementia one, this is now in its fourth edition, and it's now available in Spanish. So it focuses all of these, and, and they're the same program really, except for chapter four. Chapter four in dementia deals only with dementia. Chapter four in chronic illness deals with other illnesses that someone might have. But the education is the same, they, the education on the stress in the body, relaxation, grief, loss, depression, positive thinking, healthy living, and then also uh, the bond you build with other people. One of the men that I was in my group in 2014, we, George and I, still keep in contact. We went to his wedding, I mean, uh, it's just, we, you know, we keep in contact with his daughter, it's just, a support, like it's someone who understands exactly what you are going through. Does it, does it make sense uh, that there are two different programs? Very different uh, caregiving, uh, although there's some same stressors, but there's there's a difference in, in, in giving care to a chronic ill person versus a dementia person, right? To, to, so that's the difference. Uh, that's the reason that there are two programs. Then in 2010, uh, the program was adapted for caregivers of family members with chronic illness because they saw the need there. And this was funded by the Administration on Aging. And so, um, like Gary has already talked about why there are two different programs. But you may not be able to change the stresses in your life. And yes, we do have cats, so sorry. <laughs> Dogs are wonderful too. But you can choose how you react and respond to them. And this is what this taught me, um, is that the stress, and I still use a lot of the techniques I learned here just for stress management and everything in my daily life. Okay. Um, small groups, what happens in that? I, I'd like to tell you that the Facilitators are great magic, uh, and they do great and wonderful things. They don't. It's the group itself that does the work, and they're the ones that uh, make the difference. And it's kind of, uh, if there's any magic to it, it's the people that are individuals that are in that group. There's confidentiality. Everything that's done in that group stays in that group. Um, the focus is on the caregiver. And a lot of times that's not always the easiest thing, right? Because all day long, what's the caregiver do? Is thinking about somebody else. So it's it's a real shift in thinking. It's a, it's a refreshing think uh, time uh, for them for an hour and a half a week. And that's, you think, gee, that's kind of, kind of just a, a short, uh, compact kind of spot in the road. But it may be all that they can get and it's maybe all that, that's available to them and, and uh, they need that time. Um, the, there are stress management techniques introduced every week, so there's something new that uh, they can learn and can take with them. And they'll have the workbook that if they need to go back and review or they need to uh, expand on it, they can do that. Uh, there's a, we use the word homework because uh, just to have homework, prayer for each session. Uh, it's, it's like preparation for the next time up. It's not something that you're going to have to do uh, your math homework every week and there's two pages and that's not the point. It's, it's to get you ready and get you prepared for the next uh, opportunity to sit with your group and talk and uh, uh, feel the magic of that group. And also it's asking you questions that when you're sitting alone and you're answering these questions, it's amazing what comes out 
of your thoughts and you're starting to write down. And to do that in a group, you're not going to get the same depth that you will when you do it alone. And then you bring that to the group. Um, and you share what you want to share. You can pass, always. Um, but it's really important to do it on your own before the group so that way when you come, you've got that already prepared. Okay, so we've got two facilitators. And what they do is we will do, and future facilitators we train, that we will guide the conversation. And how we guide that is that there's three or four questions we ask during this hour and a half. And that's it. The other thing that facilitators do, one of the things that I'm really impressed by this training is that one of the facilitators will be asking the questions during the group. The other facilitator will be keeping an eye on the group and taking notes, you know, anybody we need to contact this week, anybody we need to kind of catch after the session, you know, how's everybody doing? <coughs> really keep an eye on the group because when you're asking the questions and you're making sure everybody's talking and everything, you don't necessarily keep your eye on everybody in the group. Make sure everybody has a chance to talk and you listen. And you also make sure they talk about themselves. We will have six to eight participants, and they will share in the discussion. Like Gary said, they make the discussion. They make the group. And they can pass on questions if they want to, and if they want to come back to it, they can. No one's uh, pressured into answering anything. And then they focus on themselves and their well-being. Did you get your picture? Okay, so what it's not, it's not a class and it's not a counseling group. What it does provide you is support. It provides you with problem solving skills, provides you with education, provides the participants with stress management techniques and teaches relaxation and coping strategies. So bottom line is you can't take care of anyone else until you take care of yourself first. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to show you one of the techniques that we have, that Stress Busters has, and it's called imagery. Um. That up. This is this is I guess. Microphone. Mic microphone yeah, we can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, what um, what this is is something that's online that you can pull up, and once you are in the program, there's a there's a website you can go to, and you can pull all of this up. There's a number of techniques that extend and expand on the ones that we will teach each week. So this one happens to be on uh, the third chapter, which would be the third week, on imagery. And um, th we thought this would be one that you could, uh, you could kind of play along with and just kind of see if this is something that you might use, uh, or it might not be, but it's on imagery, and remember there's been some um, discussion on it before uh, before we've done uh, this particular one, but you can pull it up yourself at home. This is one that you can pull up. Really, we don't need what you do need to do is hear it. Because it is a, it's more of a Audio thing. You're going to have your eyes closed during the whole thing. Okay. I can give you the handle
Yes. <laughs> the following is an example of how to create your own special plates. The plates you create may be very different from the one shown here. First, begin by closing the bottoms and taking several slow, deep breaths. Okay, so you're not getting any So uh, I do like his voice, though, so it was just a nice, common voice. <clears throat> but like Gary said, once you've gone through the program, then you have a password to get into these. So right now, I want everybody to close their eyes. And I want you to think of a place that you really like to be. You feel relaxed there. You can let yourself go there. to stop and see what smells you smell, what sounds do you hear, is there a breeze or not, is the sun out or is it at night, is there any water around that you're hearing? <clears throat> And I want you to go again through and, and think about why this place is so peaceful to you. Why you can come here and you can let everything go. And stay at this just for a minute. Embracing the sounds, the smells, the wind or not, is it inside or outside, the warmth of the sun or not. Stay there for a minute. Gradually come back. And now you're present again in this room and you can open your eyes. And you can stay in this place because there's a reason that this place is so special to you. Okay? And when you're feeling stress, this is one of the stress management techniques that stress busters teach us. Um, is that you can go to this place and be there. And you will find as you practice it more and more and more and you really get into feeling like you're at this place, how much your stress goes down, how calm you get, um, how you don't feel like there's anyone else around. And it's just a great feeling to have. We teach one of these, we will be teaching one of these um, at the last 15 minutes of each group. So um, the first half, per first part of the group is for the participants. The last 15 minutes, we will teach everyone a stress busters uh, technique that we encourage them to use the next, this following week. And use the one that we taught them before 
and you're going to pick the ones that you like. That you know, I don't use all of them, but there are certain ones I really like. And so you're going to go back and you're going to use those over and over again, and it makes a difference in the stress that you're doing. <coughs> So I wanted to see if there were any questions that we could answer. What questions might you have as, as uh, we presented all of this information? Anything? If you do, I'll get a mic to you so that way you can be recorded. <coughs> said this at the beginning, I apologize for not being able to hear you at the, at the beginning, but would this be for people who are actively currently um, caregiving? Yes. Uh, what about those of us who may want to get trained in to this be, technique? Okay, to be a facilitator? Correct. Okay. Once, <clears throat> once we uh, have a group, then we will be officially master trainers. And so after we do that, after we have one of our groups this summer, then we will start training facilitators that we will mentor and support. Great. Okay. Thank you very much for that. And we'll hope that you'll fill out the group. I'm sure you will have enough for this uh, your certification that you'll get. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so then um, the other question that I would imagine would be on some people's minds is what happens with the person I'm caring for while I go to this hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what I want to say is mm -hmm. that I believe those of us in the church will do whatever we can to fill that need. Uh, we are not professional caregivers. We're not certified in that way. But whatever needs to happen to help people make it possible for them to be here. I think we as a congregation would want to make that happen. Right. And that's one of the things we would be asking if when we're interviewing something, someone to be part of the group is who's going to be taking care of the person that you're careful, caregiving for uh, on a daily basis. And if they say, well, we're just going to leave them at home, it's going to be a red flag to us. That don't know that we can say it's okay for you to come to this group and leave your loved one. We don't know the circumstances. We don't know how they, I mean, some people with dementia, are, you're able to leave them alone for a while. I mean, you are, but I don't know that person, and I don't have, I'm not able to evaluate whether or not that's possible. That was, that was something we had talked about a little bit before when we met with you, Doug and I, about um, the, the fact that you uh, would want to meet or interview the people who are interested in being part of the caregiving group. Mm -hmm. So that would be one of the questions that would come out during that process. Is that correct? Yes. And I would say that one's way up on the top of the list. Mm -hmm. We we would want that question answered uh, satisfactorily in some way. And if we can help with that, of course we'd want to do that if we can direct them to uh, some caregiving for that hour and a half a week, we'd, do, we'd want to do that too, sure. But that's, that, that along with establishing a group are probably, and they're, t they're tied together, uh, are probably the biggest struggles that you have in, in doing stress busters or any kind of program like this is one, uh, bringing a group together, feeling like they can, they can take an hour and a half a week uh, to do this for nine weeks, and then uh, the second thing is, what what do they do with that loved one? Mm -hmm. And those are those are they're tied together, but they're the strongest two questions that just need an answer. Yeah. And when a person comes to the group, and we're going to be working with that person as the caregiver, they need to know that they don't need to worry. <laughs> At that moment, they don't need to be in a caregiving role for that hour and a half. They don't need to be. They need to know that there are family members being cared for. I know that there's respite care uh, over there at La Posada, 
Um, I know that we're going to be meeting this next week with the Pima County of Aging and talking with them about the program. Mm -hmm. um, so there's going to be, if I was in San Antonio, I could give you a list of, right. uh, these are things you could do. Right. Uh, um, we're new here. We've been here a little over a year. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean there's not stuff here that you already know about a lot of them. And uh, there are, uh, we've been getting acquainted with some of them. There are some we know that are in home mm -hmm. respite care, mm -hmm. so they would be able to provide that kind of level, whether it's simply, you know, kind of a uh, non intervention sort of thing, but just simply being a good neighbor to somebody, or whether it's something on another level. Yeah. So, right. And uh, I, yeah. I have to look into this. I can ask my CPA, but. I know that when we moved my mother into a memory care, um, it finally dawned on me, she has to be there. She does not have a choice. And so I went to Mary Ellen and I said, okay, she's got, she has to live there. That's where she has to live. So somehow or another, we should be able to take it off her income tax. Mm -hmm. Well, memory care is not listed on any of the long-term care. It's not listed, it's not listed anywhere. I mean, nursing home is. And so, anyway, she had a group with uh, other accountants, and they came up with the idea, you know, let's treat it like nursing home, because they have to be there. They, there's not a choice. And so, I don't know if, like, respite care that would come to the home, or respite care they would take them to. I would have to do some research on that to see if that's also tax deductible. What I can tell you is that memory care, uh, living, your, your family member living in a memory care facility is all, that. of course you've got to pay it up front first, but it's all tax deductible. They're rent, they're over-the-counter medicines you buy them, they're diapers, I mean you name it, it is all tax deductible. You just need to keep really good records and it makes a huge difference on their income tax return. Yes. Yeah. Is there is there a difference in your program for the families who have somebody in a memory care unit and those that are have living at home? No. no. Because if you're the if you're the primary caregiver, even if your family member is living in a memory care facility, you're still the primary caregiver. Mm -hmm. You yeah. are. I, I have a personal story. I felt when. Um, when my parents were living three and a half hours away from from me, I felt um, I felt a great challenge and a great push to take care of both of those folks. One of them wasn't quite as involved and wasn't there yet because she hadn't broken her hip. But uh, it doesn't matter where they are; it doesn't seem like there's a there's a stress for that caregiver, and there's a it's a, gosh, it's a daily day to day hourly thing what what do you do if you're there or if you're not there and I, th I think at times probably if you're not there it maybe uh, provides a, a greater stress at times because you don't know what's going on what kind of time frame are you thinking about both for the interviewing what kind of time frame are you thinking about both for the interviewing and the the class well, we'll start interviewing. I know there's three people I want to ask at St. Francis because they've known if we did a presentation at Lytton, and I don't know that one of them is ready. First of all, the person's got to be ready to go through this. And uh, because it does get you to look at yourself, how am I dealing with this? Um, it does bring on a lot of emotions. You do make, though, lifelong friends. I will tell you what, um, I wouldn't take anything with George. Answer to your question is, yeah. uh, when those six or eight uh, mm -hmm. show up and we all agree on a certain date and time, that's, that's what we'll look at. And um, uh, we, need to, we need them to help us make that kind of decision, right. whether we start this week or next week or it's in the afternoon or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and will it be a problem if, say, they start it in one week they can't show up? Well, uh, okay. We go back to several things. We <clears throat> would like to start them. 
in June. That would be great if we could get them started, or at least by July, depending on how many people to interview. Uh, but at least one of the groups going by June. Um, they do need, their highest priority need to be, is to be at that group. And we understand they can't make a session or two, but if they're going to miss more than that, then there's not really, they're not going to get anything out of it. In uh, my group, uh, there was a man. Uh, he desperately could have benefited from it, but it just wasn't the time for him to do it. So I think he was at like two sessions, and then he said, you know, I can't, I can't do this. Because it is. It's, it's, it's where you start looking into yourself and how are you doing this, how do you deal with stress, what happens when, you know, this happens. You know, it asks you some really thought-provoking questions to do some soul searching. I uh, noticed you don't have a handout, so um, how would people get in touch with you to know what you're doing? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> We, we have a sign-up sheet uh, just for more information. Um, we also can give you our contact information. We have a we have a card for that. We've we've learned that you need a card yeah. in Green Valley, and so we've got one. But uh, here's uh, something going around, and we'll be glad to contact you. I'm, I'm uh, gonna put these over here. This is if you're interested in either the dementia caregiver group or the chronic illness caregiver caregiver group. Will you um, do it again in the fall if your summer session works uh, out? If there is, um, mm -hmm. yes, if there's a, a need, yes. It will be summer. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, what we'll be doing also is after we do these two groups, then we will train facilitators. That will be, yeah. it's, there, it's not nine weeks long. No, it's, um, oh, the training? Uh, it's, yeah, the it's training? four days, a half day each. You know. So it's, yeah. So we, we might do two half days uh, one week and two half days on the next week. That's, that's kind of how they trained us, and we're thinking that would be what we'd pass on to the right. next facilitators. Yeah. But yes, and then what we'll also do is keep a running list of people that are interested in it and that we've already you know, interviewed, they're a good fit, you just need to wait till one fills up, you know, till we've got six people that, at least six. Does the facilitators, uh, do the facilitators have to go through the group themselves to get a feel for it, or just go through the training? Well, again, Pam had a leg up on that, and that's a good question. I think uh, desirable, yes, that a, a facilitator has gone through it or has has some association with it, some some real close association. That's a good. It's a good question. Uh, it's not a requirement, but if you've been through uh, Stress Busters as a group member, uh, you probably had a real good feel mm -hmm. if you turn into a, if you want to go the facilitation okay. route. Sure. Yeah. yeah. The answer also to that would be no. You don't have to have gone through the Stress right. Busters program to be a facilitator. But there are certain, again, things that we're going to be looking for for facilitators. Right. And so the, it's, there's interview questions for those as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Did you all pass out the kind of the topics for the nine sessions? We did not. Okay. Yeah. We, we can certainly do that with, uh, with interest. If you have uh, interest in that, we can shoot you that. Um, and we, we're glad to do that. It's uh, kind of the uh, table of contents, if you will, of these. And we'll be glad to do that. That's, that's, uh, they're inside the, inside the books, and we're going to do that. I'll also put these over here where you can look at them. Yes? Is there a charge? No. No cost. No cost. Thanks to uh, thanks to your church for uh, one of uh, the dementia program and uh, chronic illness is being funded by uh, uh, St. Francis the uh, the workbooks. So we're funded through that first 
uh, through those first two groups, which which is wonderful and it's great and it's showing uh, showing some folks really stepping up. Uh, church church is stepping up. Thank you, Jerry. Yes. Thank you. And then the uh, the other thing, Pastor Doug gave us a really good idea about paying it forward. And so once someone has gone to the group, is saying, you know, because the dementia books are twenty five dollars. And the chronic illness books is, books are twenty dollars, and that if they want to pay it forward for somebody else to go through the program at no cost, then they can do that. And what I would like to do is let people know that if it's a, I have to get their permission, but that somebody that was a former group member, uh, you know, bought this book for you. And I will tell you that makes a huge difference. It was a hospice group that bought our books. And just to know, there was an organization that cared. Mm -hmm. it made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So as you Thank can you. tell, this is pretty close to my heart. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank appreciate you. it. We Thank you. Really appreciate it very, very much. So. Um, yeah, we're really, really grateful that um, this is one of those things where you got to say, call it a God thing. You know, here we are trying to figure out how can we do this, and then you know, Gary and Pam uh, through somebody, I guess, yeah. they, Helen was yeah. it that made the connection, but anyway, made that possible for us. So we really, really appreciate it. Um, just a couple of announcements, really briefly. So thank you again. I'll just say a couple of things. One is, uh, did all of you see the article in the Arizona Daily Star? Um, Alzheimer's diseases, um, time is not on our side. It was uh, the editorial in the Star, I think it was on Saturday, and it was um, really significant because it identifies you know, that di dynamic that we know is happening, uh, particularly in Arizona, and we heard what was it a couple of weeks ago that um, Arizona will actually be number one in the country for uh, for Alzheimer's dementia? So uh, we're uh, we're at a place where what we seem to be doing really is an important issue to address. Um, also wanted to say that um, we have Pima Council on Aging coming down next week, a week from today. Uh, David Torres will be with us for one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultations. And these are the consultations, the purpose of them is to provide information to you so that you know the options that you have. Um, there sometimes is a memory test that gives if somebody wants that, if they don't, that's too, that's fine. But the value of it is for him to say, you have options. You can find different ways to do what you're doing Certainly a caregiver support group is part of that, but also all the other things that are important. Uh, we were just with some really good friends um, here from South Carolina. They were with us, and uh, we spent some, a couple of days in the uh, Phoenix area. And um, the story is that um, the stepmom married dad. Dad was 90, the stepmom was 70. Dad's uh, health continued to be fairly good, but after about seven years, he passed away. Meanwhile, mom developed dementia. The 70-year-old de developed dementia. And so all of a sudden, the challenge of caregiving in that situation, and now the family is left taking care of stepmom. Um, so that challenge, they're just now trying to qualify for Alltech, which is the Medicaid program for the state of Arizona. Uh, five years of documentation <coughs> that it takes to be able to qualify for all tech. So five years of documentation regarding the finances. So um, just the challenge of that. Um, those are the kind of things that we need to know about um, and we've been trying to provide that kind of information to you. Um, I did want to just say too, my feeling about this program is that our goal is to provide these kind of settings for people so that the information can be available to you. And we have next time um, 
a presenter again from uh, Pima Council on Aging, and she'll be talking about a dementia-friendly community or a dementia-friendly church. And this is actually a worldwide movement to try to help uh, people in the community understand the dynamics of dementia and find ways to be good neighbors, um, good sheriff's department deputies, um, people that are out in the public who are serving the public for them to know what, uh, what it means when you're dealing with somebody uh, with dementia or with a population where there's dementia. So they will be there. I'm really hoping that we can get a bunch of the churches to show up. Um, so uh, Sean Sheen. Sean. Sean. Thank you for coming from uh, Risen Savior Lutheran Church across the street. And um, she also is a nurse who's been involved with the caregivers uh, focus um, that was in the paper also a couple, about a week ago. So thank you for the work that you do. So um, is there anything else? Yeah, go ahead. I just want to say that this church has been just so wonderful to address issues that everybody else wants to put under the rug. And you've done just a super job. And I just feel privileged to have met them or heard about them. I think I overheard a name and caregivers, and I zeroed in and thought of you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we need to do. We need to go out of our comfort zone to gather what knowledge we have individually and put the pool together. And that's the way we're going to do it. There we go. Thanks. So thank you, Jerry, for everything you do. Thank you. Let me ask you this. How many of you were able to co go to the place that she was talking about? A, a quiet place, a peaceful place. Some of you were really right there with your family. You did a great job in leading that meditation. And I think you have a wonderful voice too for that. So uh, I found my place and I was really, I didn't want to come out. So, uh, <laughs> so, so that's it. So uh, in two weeks, we'll be back with a uh, presentation from Pima Council on Aging in relationship to a dementia friendly church. So thanks for coming. And thank you again.